This is a continuation of the previous tutorial on sources. Now this is actually MATLAB syncs. So we have a source, um, and then we have uh, you know, possibly many different blocks that operate upon that source, and then we have a sync as well. So a sync is going to be a destination for a signal uh, that allows us to either view it in a plot or get it into data form. So what I'm going to do is, is open up MATLAB, and uh, when we open up MATLAB, we're going to go into Simulink, but in this tutorial, we'll also do one MATLAB script as well. Um, and I'll show you how to, how to do that. Um, okay, so the first thing that we'll want to do is just change our working directory once we open up MATLAB. And so what I'm going to do is, is just go to uh, the desktop, Okay, so my desktop. Make sure it's a place that you can write, uh, that you can write files. And uh, I'm just going to use my my desktop for this one. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to open up Simulink. Okay, so after um, Simulink opens, then we'll browse to some of the. Uh, we'll, first of all, just build a very simple model here. Um, we'll go ahead and open up a new model file new worksheet here and uh, expand this just a little bit so I can see um, okay so I'm, I'm gonna first of all go to my sources okay and just grab a um, let's just grab a step for this one and uh, I'm gonna hit control plus to get a little bit bigger and uh, let's see then I'm gonna just build a, a standard first order plus dead time model um, let me go in here and just change this to be a gain of 2 and a time constant of, uh, we'll do 5 for this case. And click OK. OK, so it's updated my new transfer function. I can rename this if I want to. Um, I'm just going to rename this as my, my system. OK, so this takes my input uh, or my source and then it's going to um, send it through this transfer function and I'll have an output signal. Now I also want to do a delay as well just for a first order plus dead time model. So I'm just going to put a transport delay in here as well. Okay. And um, let, me, let me go ahead and just make this um, a time delay of 5. Alright, so I have a, I've updated a couple of these. Um, we can also update our step as well. So I'm going to step my model at a step of at 5. Um, and initial value of 0, final value, let's say that is, uh, let's say 2. That. Okay. Okay, so I have my step, um, my system, my transport delay, and then I need to come down to my sinks area. Okay, so if I come down to sinks, I can see I have a, a couple different options. Uh, one of them that I use uh, most commonly in just building models is the scope. Okay, so if you just drag the scope over, then uh, you can be able to see the output of this. I'm just going to connect these just by left clicking from one and dropping it on the other one. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, simulate this. Okay, and uh, so it's simulated. I double click the scope and uh, I see no signal here, okay, because there's a little bit of a delay, so I need to lengthen my time. And uh, I'm going to go out to 30 seconds instead, okay, and uh, then go ahead and hit this um, auto scale button, and then you can see at 10 seconds it starts to respond, and then by 30 seconds it starts to get up to asymptotically approach uh, the value of 4. Okay, so I have, um, this is kind of a standard way of outputting some of the variables. I'm going to show a couple different ones, though. Okay, in addition to scope, we have, for example, uh, the display. Okay, now the display will allow us to see the value of that. Okay, so um, uh, that value that comes out. Uh, we also have uh, some others as well. I'm going to do the two workspace. So there's a to workspace, and we can also do to file as well. So we can create a new file with some of our results in it. Now let's say I, I don't just want to see 
my output, but I also want to see my input as well. Okay, so um, one of the things I'm going to need to do is just combine these two signals. I can do that with a mux. So I'm going to put that, uh, drop that right here, and connect my output to the bottom one. Then I have to right click here uh, to be able to bring. I missed it. Uh, you got to get right on that line, and uh, and then right click off of it, and you'll see a little dot up here, and the red line. Okay, so I'm going to connect it up to my first input for that mux. It will be combine these two signals, and then I can go down to my scope again. Okay, and then from here I can connect it to my other ones by right clicking on these and dragging it to my other outputs as well. Okay, so you can see the little black dots, that's where you split a signal and uh, and then send it to two different places. Okay, and then when I simulate this again, okay, so I have um, at the very end I see my, my step, my first signal is going to be 2 and my second one is going to be approaching that 4, 3.9, so very close to 4. And then I also have the untitled.mat and then the sim out. So let's go find those two. Um, we, we've already seen the scope. Now we have both of our signals on there. The first one is the step, and the second one is the output. And uh, But let's go see if we can find sim out and then untitled.mat. Okay. So I didn't change those from the defaults, but you can do that as well. Um, so you see in the workspace here, um, you see sim out. And if I just double click this variable, um, you'll be able to see you have time and then data one and data two and you can scroll down here and see uh, some of the values um, okay so uh, it output it as a structure I'm going to close this if I just type in sim out okay then I see that it is a, uh, a structure sim out dot time is going to be my time vector and uh, if I do sim out dot data, those are going to be my two vectors of my data. Okay, so I can also do sim out dot data and just grab the first column, and there you see the step. If I hit the up arrow, it'll re uh, bring up the last command. If I do two, that's going to be my y vector, my output um, from my um, from my uh, simulation. Okay, so. Um, I also have untitled.mat. That was a, actually a file that was created. So let's go over to my desktop. I'm just going to close this out. And it created this untitled.mat. But maybe you're saying, well, I don't want it to do untitled.mat. I would rather have it do something like um, <coughs> my, my file.mat. So just double click that. Um, you can put the uh, change the variable name. So I'm going to change that to results as well. And uh, and then you can click um, apply on this. Okay. So that is that dialog box is a little bit off my screen right now, so I got to move it up so I can click apply. And okay. Okay. So um, I have it going to my file dot mat, and if I want to change this one as well, just double click it, and you can put down um, my uh, variable. Okay, so you can change the name that comes out. But um, let's say I want to go in to myfile.mat. I'll just go ahead and delete um, this one. Okay, this is just an auto save. Um, if I save it, then I'll also get my simulink file. Um, my simulink. Okay, so that will uh, save it, my simulink, and it'll show up uh, right here in the same folder that I'm working. That's your simulink model. Okay, so. Um, what I want to do now is uh, uh, go ahead and simulate this again, and then I should see my file dot mat that uh, returns. Okay, so you can open this. It's a MATLAB. Uh, you can't really open it in a text editor, but you can open it in MATLAB. Um, so now what I want to do is is um, now I like this scope, but let's say I want to be able to create a plot after um, I run this, and and so I can either do um, let me go back to MATLAB and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new script file. Okay, now in this script file, I'm going to, um, it opens up an editor and uh, what I'll do is just go ahead and clear 
um, all the variables and close all the plots. And what I want to do is load this uh, model file in that I had my file.mat. And so I'll just do load my file.mat. And then uh, let me go ahead and create a new figure. Um, I can either type figure one, for example, to create a new figure. And then I can do plot. And uh, now I have my file, but it loaded in uh, this uh, loaded uh, results. Okay, so that variable that I had specified is going to load in a variable called results. So what I'm going to do is, is go ahead and take results.time. Uh, that was one of the elements of my structure. And then results uh, dot data. And uh, I'll go ahead and plot that as a, a blue line. Okay, and I'm going to hold on to that plot, and then I also want to plot the second column of that data. And uh, I'll make that a red, I'm going to do red uh, dashed line. Okay, so I have my, my input and my output that are going to be generated. If I run that script, okay, I've got to save this, uh, let me just call this my script. Okay, and it's going to run it, and I'll see the input and the output. Okay, so let me just add a couple things to this just to make it a little bit uh, better. I'm going to add a uh, X label, an X label here um, just with time, and a Y label. Um, I'll just call this response. And then I'll also do a legend as well. So I have my first one is the input, and my second one is going to be the output. And uh, let me run this just one more time. Okay. So it ran it and it generated um, a legend and you can see the X and Y labels as well. And then this one you can resize um, and save. So you can go file, save as, and that allows you to save it in a variety of formats. Okay, so it's just a little bit more flexible than the scope that you see here. You can also generate a script that can read in uh, either this uh, myfile.mat or you can have it read in um, my variable uh, that was sent to the workspace. Okay, so um, now let's say every time you run this, you want it to generate that same plot with this script. One of the things that you can do is in File, and then you go to Model Properties. Okay, and then you have a thing called Callbacks. And uh, whenever you stop the function, you can tell it to go ahead and run my script. Okay, don't put in the dot m there. Okay, so now when I run it again, it's going to run that script, and then you can see the uh, figure that was generated from that script. Okay, so this is just a brief tutorial on uh, generating uh, results from a Simulink file. You can do it with a scope. You can send the values to the workspace. You can send it to a file that you can then load again, or you can just display it um, here in the uh, in the model that you have for your simulink. Okay, and uh, we'll go ahead and conclude here. This is just another uh, tutorial. Uh, for additional tutorials, um, you, know, you can come to uh, the apmonitor.com uh, website, in particular this process dynamics and control course, where we have a lot of different tutorials on MATLAB, simulink, and dynamic systems.